Podcast. I'm Jesse. Happy to be here. And uh, she's my uncle Jesse. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Ready to get into some fun stuff. Are you a center, Jesse? I totally am. Oh heck yeah, good. I was glad worried. to be here. I forgot to ask that before you started. <laughs> and so my our, our sinful guest today has come highly requested. You probably know who he is already, but for those that don't go to extremely cool parties and hang out with really cool people. We got Keenan over here. Oh, what's up, everybody? I'm excited to be on this podcast. We're going to tear it up. We're going to get into some sinful topics. And um, I am a certified sin. I got the stamp of approval. So uh, let's see we get at it. What do you think? Oh, heck yeah. Let's We're going to take it. you to confession today. You're going to tell us all your sins. I'm excited. Wow. <laughs> Me too. Yeah, get free. Get free again. Get some more. So, this is only my third time hanging out with Keenan, but we were talking a little bit before the podcast, and we realized that all three of us have lived with my boyfriend, Blake, <laughs> which, if you've listened to the past two episodes, it takes me about five minutes into the podcast to bring him up, because it's amazing. Um, we love him. What do we think? How was living with him? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, tiny, tiny bit messy, not too bad. Great roommate overall. <laughs> First thing she says. <laughs> no, he, good roommate overall. He really was. I loved living with him. I agree with the messy. A little messy, but Let, great You know. Overall. What? Yeah. I'm so surprised. <laughs> <laughs> he cleaned up for you. You mean Hurricane Blake? No. <laughs> what? Oh, my goodness. He's great. So that is our yeah. common thread. But Blake would kept telling me about this Keenan guy and... Um, Keenan is in the Burning Man community, is that correct? Yeah, yeah, or like the Burning community, same thing but different, right? Yeah, I've um, never been. I might sound like a neither have I. An, uh, amateur. When I, I have been about. to a burn, not the man, but yeah, yeah, it's a um, it's a it's a community that I just kind of found myself in. That makes sense for me and the like, progression of my life, and um, I'm super like blessed to be a part of that community and really strive to contribute as much as I can. And I just got back from Burning Man like two weeks ago. Um, so amazing. And I have two other burns happening in my near future. One is um, in Pittsburgh, North Carolina. It's called Oracle. And then the other what is it one. Called? Oracle? How do you spell that? Oh, fuck. Yeah. C- uh, C-O-R-A-C-L-E. Who, who names them? So with regional burns, it's like the... Um, committee or whatever will we'll come up with a name and a theme. Each one of them has a theme. Um, damn, the, one, the theme for this year is uh, God, I can't remember. Of we'll back <laughs> so that's it's, coming uh, up soon. Yeah, that one's November 2nd and 3rd. Um, and then the other burn I'm involved with is called Emergence. It's in Charleston, South Carolina. Um, and that's sometime in April. We haven't picked an exact date yet. So you're on like a, a committee. I'm actually not on the committee, but with these two burns, the um, my involvement is with uh, DPW, and DPW stands for Department of Public Works. So essentially, I'll be doing um, site management and helping out, um, like an auxiliary hand for helping camps set up stuff and making sure the burn functions in a good way. At the big burn, um, DPW is in charge of like uh, helping large art installations get put together and managing the streets and um, all the public stuff that you would have. So if you can imagine, um, speaking specifically to Burning Man, and this, that just scales down for regional burns, uh, it's a city. It, it's a it's a place, there's nothing in this desert, yeah. and then 80,000 people show up. And so as a result, 
there's this whole level of infrastructure set up to manage all those things that a city would require. Right. And uh, I'm a handy person and a creator and something that kind of fits the form. And that's the, these two firms, the regionals that I'm speaking to, um, that's how I'm going to actively participate and be involved is super rewarding. Well, like, how did you join DBW? Yeah, so basically, um, earlier... <laughs> I feel like I'm pro now. <laughs> yeah, you like a little lingo. Um, basically, <clears throat> earlier, before we started this podcast, we were talking about different places that I've lived, and we have mentioned um, this place I lived in Asheville that is a community, and that community was really involved in the burn scene, and I had just been going to festivals and all that kind of shit since I was like, you know, a teenager or whatever, and that was fine and dandy. And they were like, bro, you got to go to a burn. You got to go to a burn. And I was like, okay, whatever. And ended up going to a regional burn in probably 2007, 2018. And then... How old were you? Uh, I'm 27 now, so whatever that math would be. Hang on, our listeners. Let's, let's do some calculations. <laughs> it is 2022. Yeah. And, uh, so 2018, 18 plus 6, so that's 21. Perfect. Yeah, kick ass. And so, um, yeah, I got involved then, and I went to That's a bunch great. of regional burns in 2019. I Were went you to nervous? My first big burn. Uh, I was like, intrigued. I was a lot of feelings. I was nervous, but also like um, stoked and like, yeah. ready to get into something more. You know, I something didn't know a different. Lot about that New, scene. yeah. I agree because like yeah. I I go to festivals, but I feel like a burn, and I love that. But I feel like a burn is a level up mm-hmm. from it's what I from what I've heard. It's interesting you say that because. In my perspective, I used to go to a ton of festivals. Once I started going to Burns, I haven't I've been to maybe one other festival. Yeah. yeah, I had my first experience with a burn this year. And I was he there? Yes. Okay. He was, oh, was he like helping you? Like, yeah, we went to To the Moon in Tennessee. Uh, this was two months ish. In June. Ju- yeah, so June. No one knows a day that they right. really. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, I would say I had a great time and totally into the whole idea of burns. Now, like, I would probably pick that over a festival if I had, you know. What, what I mean by level up is it seems like it's, like, advanced um, partying. It's, like, no, it's not just, even, not this about, well, I don't know about burns, but from my, what I hear collect about it, it seems more like a level up, like the art, the, the, but, yeah, theme, the level the of creativity, co- commitment, the, yeah. um, and the things that are available to you, it seems like pro level, more pro level, it's a, it's a, good a way. great experience, yeah, yeah it, or, and, and correct me if I'm wrong. Well, I think if I could speak to what I think you're expressing is that for me, and, and I think this is like a synopsis of what you're expressing, but I'm speaking from having of it is that a burn is based on principles. There's ten principles that like guide how the um, how the event is done and is produced and, and done up. And actually, there's eleven principles. Initially, there was ten, and now there's eleven. The eleventh is consent. Oh, and I, so I, 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 the, the I, I, big difference for me between a burn and a festival is, is to break it down. One thing is um, participation or versus spectating. Speaking to a festival, when we go to a festival, there's the main stage, there's the side stage, there's all that stuff, and then there's the campsites. And then you go to bigger things like Halloween or Electric Forest, and there's art and there's interactivity there and whatever. But at a burn, it's all people coming together, bringing what they got, and fucking killing it, and showing up with what they have, and participating, and being involved. And then it's guided by these love, these principles. Some are radical self reliance, radical self expression. I love that saying. Um, and, and, Me too. Um, you know, leave no trace. And, um, which is obviously pack in, pack out, and all these other things that I think the festival scene doesn't have, and there's other thing of decommodification. So another what does aspect, that mean? So decommodification, I'm, I'm actually, I don't know the exact definition, <laughs> but, but for me what it means is like not commodifying something. Not oh, like brands, a, right? Well, taking, not, not making a resource something that you capture. Or an event, something you capitalize on. Yeah, not Getting making money of, off of the I've, people. Yeah. I've heard, I, I'm familiar with, I've like done, I've been fascinated with Burning Man, um, and I heard that like brands, like they, you don't want like branding, like Nike no, sponsoring or something. Definitely. Right? Yeah, exactly, because yeah. it's a level of like promotion, which is a level of an aspect of our capitalism.
it's, it's exciting. It's not that they're anti-capitalist. It's just that in that environment, it's not about making money. Like, so the thing about a brand that's different than a festival is a festival has a producer and like a promotional team and all this, that, and the third, and you pay tickets to get in and then you buy food and this, that, and then burn, you buy a ticket to help the board do all the things that need to fund it. Yeah, like bathrooms, yeah, water, water yeah, things like yeah, that. Yeah, the necessities, the resources. Necessities, yeah. yeah, but then everything within the event is all um, gifting. And it's not bartering. It's not like, I give you this, you give me that. Oh, it's not still, like, okay, I think it was it's bartering. It's, yeah. not, it's not bartering. It's not, you get this, wow. or I get that. It's, here's what I have to offer and what do you have to offer. And in that organic space, it allows things to happen so much. Um, people get into a space of like, when we're all contributing, it, there is a lot of abundance, you know? Absolutely. And um, and that's those are some of the big differences, and that like really fucking turned me on. I was like, this is fucking amazing. So you know? so I heard that I I like I had a lot of free time on my hands lately. So there used to not be a seed of Burning Man, and now there is. Do you know anything about that? I've heard people have an opinion about that. I don't know a lot about that, but if I could speak to my thoughts on hearing that, I would say it's interesting. <laughs> and I also realized that like when you have an event that at this point, I think this year there was like somewhere in the ballpark of eighty thousand people. I, I saw the photos. It, it looked like a huge crowd. I, how, so but how did they get them all organized? I would put up a picture for the video because there's like you know the aerial shots. It like looks like a. It's, not, a, it's a sundial. Yeah. How how did they like? I mean, like but half of the circle of, or a quarter isn't filled. Yeah, that's the deep. Why do they do that? So that people can go out in the depths of the dark. I always and wondered why it wasn't a full circle. Leave that open to kind of. There's probably actually more of a story than I understand, but that's open so that people can go out in the dark depths of you know, whatever and they can party with their fucking hands off. Are there crazy death storms? Like I heard death day? storms are really bad this year. I know, like yeah, random bits of information. Gnarly. I actually have a jar of some like fly that I should have brought. I thought about it. Again. Yeah, this, this year there were gnarly dust storms. There was like, um, actually, when I was packing up to leave, there was this dust storm. So I'm packing up to leave. I'm like leaving on Tuesday. The event ended on Sunday night. Um, my two homies I was taking out of the event with me, one of them broke their knee, or actually tore <gasps> their MCL on like some fucking swing. And then the other one... Was it a fucking swing or was it a, a swing? <laughs> yeah, that is, it was actually just like a, a sex swing. Yeah. Right <laughs> it was not a fucking swing. Was, in that context, it was actually just a rope hanging from something. Well, that's unfortunate. Yeah, it was yeah, way that's... not nearly as cool. I know, Mike. <laughs> so that happened with them. And then the other individual who was coming out with me had a very tough mental thing going on so Tuesday, <laughs> Tuesday comes around and they haven't packed up most of their stuff so I start packing up their stuff for them they're sitting in the RV with my partner we don't have enough gas to run the AC so it's fucking that day oh y'all 124 God. degrees <gasps> oh my no goodness. AC so they're sitting in there to like avoid the dust storm and like try to get themselves together I'm packing their shit because they can't and a wow. dust storm is rolling in so dense that I can't see my hand in front of my face and what was happening is it would like blow a bunch of dust and then it would like give you a break and the weather would clear and then I would grab shit and throw it in my trailer and then another big wave would come. And when it's um. dusty like that, I'm fucking over here hiding underneath a trailer for a tractor trailer. Yeah. Because people still drive their cars or move around or walk or run or so ride now you have dogs you know, like, yeah. Yeah. They hide under so the I don't want to get I don't know if I get crushed by something. Exactly, because oh, people could not yeah. see you. Yeah, you can't see shit. Yeah. So yeah, so did you didn't have your goggles on? Did oh, the dude, goggles I had help? goggles and a face mask and all this stuff. Well, there. I heard if you left Monday, you're going to get stuck in a, like a 10-hour line. And that's what happened a lot. Of what if you run out, run out of gas? Do they have people who like... People ran out of gas and then other good, Samari you, other good Samaritans just blown it, gave yeah. gas to fill their shit. Yeah, it was fucked for people leaving. That's why I stayed late. It's interesting. I'm really fortunate because when I got into the burn community, I came in with people who were like very involved. And so the whole time I've been doing these events, I've been going and setting up and then tearing down. I haven't, nice. I've never gone to one and then just done the three day thing and left. I've and always left. gone yeah. and that's a good, torn down. That's a good way to, even like with just regular festivals, like if you're helping like set up and tear down, it's mm -hmm. a good way to meet people. It shows that you, yeah. like, give, you care and you're yeah. not just there to party. And exactly. You care. Yeah. yeah, it's cool. You build more community that way. What's, what camp are you with? This year I was with a camp, um, 
out of, um, I guess they're based out of Arizona, called the Ham Lovers Lounge. When I do regional <laughs> stuff, we do Dolls to the Wall. Um, I love I love all the names that I've heard. Oh my fun. god, yeah. what's Dolls? His camp at, more. at To the Moon this yeah, year. Um, the camp that I do regionals with um, is called Dolls to the Wall, and we started that camp when I was living at that communal house. Um, it's a play on Balls to the Wall, and we literally just came up with the fucking name as a joke, and it stuck. But our, our, like, vibe is what happens is we have a bar, we have a lounge space, we have a huge shade structure, and then we, during the daytime, uh, from, like, Friday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, for, like, the middle of the day, probably, like, noon to the four, we do a baby-making station, so yes. we collect, we've been collecting baby dolls from Goodwills and all sorts of other sources, and oddities and weird things and craft shit, and we will have people come and make babies. Are you guys, you can crazy, make a baby thing. Disgusting. Are you guys the people behind the, wet and on Haywood Road, where there's those baby dolls hanging? No, it's not us, but if you've been, you been into the auditorium and seen, like, those baby dolls uh, there. I literally have a, or wait, no, it's not auditorium, what's that other place that, um, burned down that I love? Oh, uh, Sly Grog. Yeah, yeah. I love the place. Yeah. They have baby What's dolls. What's going there. on with that place? Yeah, I what? love that place. That's is a it, successful sin. I'm going to report like dates? Is it, is it I don't being know. remodeled? I, I need to check in because that place is cool. You guys with that, if you can imagine Sly Grog, like, oh, that's sim very similar to the aesthetic that we were bringing. I love that. And for me, I really appreciate that because in this community, among, like amongst other types of community, it's very, it's such a broad spectrum. You've got nerds to fucking you know, like kink camps to like right. fucking, you know, the hot people camp to like the spiritual healing camp. You've got the fucking full spectrum. I saw this on um, this TikTok and it was so heartwarming. It's like me and my dad have been going to Burning Man every single year. And like his dad looks like your typical like Midwestern 40 year old, like, you know, white night he balances, like tucked in shirt. <laughs> They just go for the art. Like, they don't party, yeah. but they go, they've been going for 10 years, and, like, it's the most wholesome pictures. Like, yeah, it's, yeah. you know, that's like... Radicals, um, per inclusion. Yeah. Right? Like, everyone's, anyone everyone is accepted there. And yeah. the beautiful thing about that is when that is, like, a principle that something's based around, then people get to be what they view as their authentic self. But, um, and that is, like... You've touched on that a couple times, and I think the thing that's been scaring me about Burning Man is it seems like, the because there are separate camps, so in my mind, I assume, like, it's, it, I, it, like, I have to prove myself. It seems clicky. It's, you d obviously said it's not, but in my mind, I'm like, okay, these people don't know each other. Will they like me? Everyone is so accepting, though. Yeah. From what, yeah. That's what scared me. Yeah. 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 Everyone is super accepting. With that being said, like... There are still cliques, and there are still snooty people, and there are still assholes, and there's are right. still judgmental people. But see, the cool thing is, is like that's our fucking world. And yeah, this is just it's a representation of it's another expression of our society, and that's just an aspect of it. But I would say, by and large, like the real see the real. And so, if you're being yourself and being authentic, and people who are in the same space with themselves see that, then it's just like, yeah, fuck yeah, you're on the same tip. Have you ever heard? No. Oh God. Okay. So I'm probably gonna get not canceled, but if, <laughs> if the two people that are listening and then my so so the boogie is I think like I try not to like talk shit. It's it's not a, a wannabe Burning Man, but it got started years ago by these like people that I met in college. They have different chapters, um, and when I first moved to Asheville, I was hanging out with these like hippie people, and they would always talk about the book. The boogie, the boogie. Is it, is it an event? Yeah, but you have to be invited, and it's like top secret, and like yeah, people that have been going there for years, yeah. like have to. I want to, from what you're saying. I have heard of this. Actually. Yeah, so I've been hearing about it for years, and then Damn. finally one day, and the, like the whole thing is, if it's your first day, the first time you get sponsored. Yeah. And um, so I went with my ex, and they, they make it a whole big thing, like, even before you go, you, you like, are already knowing that you're gonna be at the bottom of the totem pole, <laughs> and, um, I went, I was pretty young, I would say the age range there is more, like, 30s, 40s, 50s, like, and these people get down, and it's, like, it's a party, like, naked, like, nowhere near the burn, but it, there are camps, and there, um, but so I went with my partner, uh, and, like, I go there, it's, I would say it's probably not um, 
their prince they would probably not have us as their principal, but I got radical self ex or radical ex exclusion. I mean, I was there, didn't know anyone, just standing around, and th there's no money there either. Everyone participates, like there's an open bar, everything. So I'm standing there. I ask uh, this woman for a lighter because I didn't have one. First thing she says, "Don't be that useless bitch at a party without a lighter." Oh my god! Yeah. No. Um. And then yeah, people yeah, were ex exclusion. And they they're for sure. There's a thing like for first year people, they like haze you a little bit and they call you a virgin. And it it could be in good fun, eh. but I didn't get good vibes from like most people I met, so it didn't feel. So I don't know. That but that is just my. Um, opinion and yeah. also I've heard people have had a really good time and I just probably had a different opinion but anyways keep, keep that I think that's also why I'm scared to go to a burn because it seems like a very you know different type of party hot like because they're all like oh we you know I don't know no I so radical yeah. inclusion that sounds heavy I want, I want you to come yeah I want to see the man next year or maybe even yeah, my friend Jasmine yeah. do you know Jasmine She's oh. in the mermaid camp. Of course. And we're back, everybody. We had to have a serious dance off for a second. <laughs> Who won the dance off? I totally won. Yeah, I think Keenan might have. <laughs> it's, it's that hammer time move. <laughs> I was it was you were doing somersaults, Jesse. That was really cool. Oh yeah. With one hand. Super athletic. Anyway, sorry. We're talking about a radical soft question. Alright, I have a, actually a very important question. Did you see Paris Ellen? I love her. You know what's funny is I didn't see Paris Hilton, but last night I was with my homie um, who went to Burning Man with me, and we were like Saturday morning, and, and actually Sunday morning, stayed up all night, he was taking pictures with his Polaroid of this group of people, and they were like, hey, you gotta go see Paris Hilton, DJ? <sighs> and he was like, um, no, nah, I'm just gonna go do this other thing. And like, he and I rode off into the night, or the morning, and <laughs> he told me that last night, and I was like, what the fuck, dude? Have you missed out on seeing Paris Hilton? Play? I would have been so proud. That also I was kind of like, I love her. fuck it, like whatever. It, but right. because, because I would so, I'm holding out to see Shaquille O'Neal play a set. <gasps> I've been, to, okay. I have the man? I don't know, but I would love to see it happen. I have a connection to DJs? Shaquille O'Neal. Yeah. Do you know, I've always been so fascinated by them. So they, they do like a lot of other entertainment stuff and they did some like, photo shoot with Shaq. There, there's a connection. I don't know. I saw pictures of him with Shaq too. So there's like, there is a link. Yeah. Shaq. When I was single, that, I was that like, cracks me oh, up. Look at that. <laughs> right. Shaq. Shaq. No, I said, I'm like, you know Shaq. Because I, I saw them, like, she had Insta stores with him and she's like, oh yeah, like we do, we work together sometimes. I'm like, hook it up. Like, Could you imagine? Eight, right? What? Dude, how long do you think Shaq is? Like eight inches. Oh my God. I know. No, I'm like, it's gotta be bigger. I, like, Ten? Like, I don't even, I actually don't know if I could handle it. <laughs> I, I could not. I don't, I don't think. I don't think. think. <laughs> Honestly, it would be hilarious. Right? Like, like could any of us? Have, have either of y'all seen a micro penis before? Yes. No, but I've heard yes. stories. Yes, I have. So a friend of mine works as a PA. Actually, why did I like admit that? It's like saying that's probably. I mean, it's not yes. Like, yes. Some people are just, that's that's what you're born yeah. with, you know? Yeah. So my exactly. homie is a uh, PA, and um, I'll make this quick because whatever but she, uh, <laughs> she uh, has this um, kid come in to do a physical or whatever and his dad is there <laughs> and uh, she told me and um, her partner about it like after work one day oh and my she was God. like walking into the house and she's like I saw a micro penis <laughs> we were like what and she goes yeah so you know like I'm doing the physical and um, you know I see his micro penis yeah. and his dad just looks away at uh, oh like, like oh, oh, shocker like, I'm like that's oh, what I did when I saw yeah. it but actually I mean I was not mean but it was someone I had a huge crush on yeah and this is in high school you know if they can overcompensate no they didn't they actually were dick too you know but that might help for sure it they, would definitely help I they were dick too and like I I was next to him in computer class and I had my purse and I, I might all fall out of my purse and uh, after we hooked up, like, I guess he, like, didn't like me. And then he told me that, like, he texted what? me to say, he's like, get some mind all the ice your badge. Like, Excuse you? Like, oh, what, my God. Like, um, it's <laughs> when you have, like, period period cramps, like, 
I don't know. It's not it's not glamorous at all. But when you're in high school, like that's you're just so embarrassed. You don't want you, I don't know guys to see that. Yeah, I said takes then I was like, Oh my god, that's like the meanest thing. But I never said you had a micro penis. I could, yeah, but I didn't You could have been like, Well, you can't talk shit, you know. Haters gonna hate. No, I cried. I didn't have any confidence in high school, but that's another story. Um screw him. But Back to Paris Hilton being a DJ, I didn't think, like, she could... I love Paris Hilton. I didn't think she could be a good DJ, but I saw a clip of her recently, and she was playing that song, and we all just... And I feel like I'd be sick if you're out partying. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I guess she just does it for fun. I mean, she can do whatever the fuck she wants. She can. She does, yeah. like, 250, yeah. like, yeah. 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 Did you she see... what? She what was mean, the coolest Kim, Kim K was her assistant. Yes, yeah, she was. Yeah. We, yeah. That's how before Kim was famous, she was, was Paris. Hilton. She wore yeah. a nicer closet. She was Paris Hilton's assistant. Wow, that's hilarious. Yeah. yeah, and she saw Paris do the sex tape, so then she's like, "Oh, that's how she got paid. like you know, mm-hmm. I should do that." That's interesting. Isn't that crazy? I mean, it's crazy, and it's also like totally relatable. Like you totally, yeah, 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 I like, uh, totally see that. It, it's like, funny like, talk how, similarly. How I see like younger stars now, like who are not that famous. I see them trying to release sex tapes, and now I feel like if you do that, like, did you not. watch Pam and Tommy? I uh, yeah, I watched like four episodes. I need I needed to finish it. It was the first like real sex, sex yeah, scandal, yeah, I read about sex that, tape scandal. Yeah. I feel like in today's day and age, that's not um, as much of a launch pad. No, per se, no, because it's not. Of OnlyFans. Oh like, yeah. Anybody can. Yeah. It's such a broader spectrum of things. How do you feel about OnlyFans? I think that women or men for that matter i think humans that decide to um how can i say this profit off of their sensuality or sexuality as long as they're empowered by that yeah i think that's fucking rad and more power to you i think people who uh act in that way out of um a scarcity mentality or out of like not having another option, yeah. it doesn't seem like a healthy thing. I no. just think in the bigger picture of society, making sex and sensuality more accessible and a more reachable conversation is a super beneficial thing, you know what I mean? I agree. But um, it also, I think the, the other side, it's, everything's a, a po- there's so many polarities and like um, dichotomies in our, our existence. I love that word. I was going to say. I think the other side of the same coin is to say that, like, um, there's this same toxicity that exists with Instagram or any other platform where, like, if someone can't de- or can't compartmentalize the identity that they have in their presence on OnlyFans or TikTok or Facebook or Instagram, then it's a massively unhealthy thing because yeah. that's all a facade. It's, no, yeah. it's not rooted or balanced with any actuality. No. And so that as a contribution to society as a whole is super diminishing because it makes people value how other people perceive them so much. And yeah. it takes away rooted, strong, empowered self-identity. And it's hard to be an empowered person, especially with sexuality. Yeah, I, I'm i like pro-sex work, I think. And I really think the conversations are turning around where like, even like ten years ago, like if someone was a stripper, would be like, "Oh my god!" But I, I'm for sex work. Um, I so I'm in a monogamous relationship, and I would be upset if I don't mind if my partner watches porn at all. But if my partner was subscribed to an OnlyFans, I would be upset. How yeah. do you feel, Destiny? I would agree. Okay. I don't care about porn, yeah, at all like that, but. To have, like, an infatuation with a specific, you know, yeah. account and to pay. Yeah, you know, know, it's, like, like personal. Why, you know? So what's the difference between a partner? What, for e- each of y'all, what it is, how can I say this? What makes the defi- the dividing line? Porn's free, and you can just, like, look is it, it the, up. It I the, think, the, for me, fun. it's the more, like, intimate relationship, or, yeah. like, or not... I don't really know how it works on OnlyFans, but I don't know. I just wouldn't want it to be like. So it's the is it the monetary more, thing? Um, it seems like because I guess I don't know if you can. I've actually never been on the website. I don't know if you can search yeah. or something, but like it seems like you have to select someone to pay for. So it's more like, well, I guess on porn you could, if you have a favorite porn star, but 
I, when I watch porn, I don't have a favorite. I don't know. And the, I have a favorite video. I kind of like go to the same video every time. For me. <laughs> Like, it seems more like emotional, like yeah. I wouldn't want it to be someone I knew, or yeah, especially someone, just know? someone to pay for it. Like, so yeah. Kind of went out a um, play devil's uh, advocate. Yeah. yeah. So you're pro sex work, but you have an issue with your partner. Yes. Um, what would I say? Like, not promoting, but supporting. Supporting. Yeah, because I'm a jealous bitch. I I want single. Oh. People. I want people that are not my partner to support them. Yeah. Yeah. yeah not me. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, no pun intended. No pun intended. I love my jokes. <laughs> no, I, I, I agree, but yeah, I know. I try. I've gone back and forth. I um, I found myself very jealous when I was with my my ex, and then so after that, I was like, you know what? Am I jealous, or do I just need to like be more open and actually like open that door and be more fluid with my partner? And like I did that for a little bit, and um. No, I'm just, I just, no, I, I can't share. Really? I think it just depends on the circumstances, you know? No, it's not, I, for, I'm not sharing my partner. Where do you think jealousy, what do you think jealousy is rooted in? Abandonment. Like, and being you, ignored as a kid. Can you turn, would trust be another thing that it's, like, abandonment, could abandonment also, could trust be coupled with that? If someone abandons someone and there's a break, break yeah, of trust? Yeah, I don't think I'll ever be able to trust that someone will abandon me. It's, Mm-hmm. I mean, it's, we don't have to let it go in the, the sob story, but right. yeah, I just, I... Have you heard the term compersion? No. The term compersion is, like, I guess, uh, the opposite of jealousy. So compersion would be speaking to, like, a scenario with partners, because it's kind of like where we're at. Jealousy would be like, I'm, I'm feeling this way because you're doing this this thing, and it's making me feel, whatever, inferior, abandoned, uh, scared, whatever, inferior, whatever. And compersion would be, I see my partner engaging with this person, and I am joyed at how that person makes them feel because they are sharing the way I feel with them. It's like appreciation oh, for, okay. it's the opposite, it's the appreciation for someone's like connection. It, it's something I'm working on. It's something I it's hate about myself. I feel like, yeah, that wouldn't it's, come easily. Yeah, I, I've been trying. I want to, I've been, something I'm working on, like, yeah, it's mm-hmm. easier said than done. Yeah, it's, and I think some people are more probably. more prone to it, but I don't know. I, I, and, like, I don't want to stay on this topic too long, but I just never, I've, like, forever, I've never felt, like, important or seen or heard or, like, mm-hmm. so it's just a whole big bunch of baggage. Yeah. But my baggage like is Louise right now, so. Layered. Yeah, it's layered. It's layered. Or depth. Either one. Yeah. I mean, there's just a lot of things to unpack as a human. And the reality, I think, is that, like, we create, like, we harden ourselves around things in our life. Mm-hmm. And then when it comes back up, instead of having, in certain instances, instead of having the ability to navigate through it, it's just like, Oop, not right now. And then it becomes a thing that just, yeah. like, hardens within us. But it's um, Well, it's hard. Some people seem to just have it so easy. Like, some people seem to not yeah. have as many lives. I know everybody is fighting a hard battle, mm-hmm. but some people seem to yeah, have some it. Some people just have it easier. And that's they really it's do. It's either privilege yeah. or it's hard work or it's both. And then there's also this thing that comes back to the Instagram conversation or yeah. whatever is that I think a lot of people on the outside look like they got their shit together and definitely. Oh, definitely. Them. Yeah, it's a, it's a front. Yeah, I guess yeah. I wear my crazy on my sleeve, but you know what? I like to think of myself as genius, you know, <laughs> like not genius. Like, well, I'm a mad genius. No, it's inspiring. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, that energy is. I think the, in my perception, like we I exist feel in. That. Uh, yeah, it's like we have duality in this existence. Dichotomies. Right? Yeah, <laughs> and so there's like the right hand path and the left hand path, or what have you. Like there is that like balanced and stillness and like purity or whatever and there's also chaos and fire and destruction they're the exact same fucking thing it's just there are different ways to get to again the same thing and whatever that is it's like too much to really speak to but it's a thing that i see doesn't exist in like and i'm sure you all experience this in Asheville specifically there's this woke culture no uh, i've never seen that at all no, yeah. oh well, yeah well, i don't i don't drive by the vans form a vans monument every night do you know about but in that culture there's a lack of um um like acceptance or a lack of like understanding the chaotic path someone worded it to me and i thought it was so good like 
they're like, okay, conservatives, woke. But they do kind of act, the, not the same values, but they act the same way because it's so, they're so hell-bent on getting their view across mm-hmm. that, I, I'm probably not explaining it, but he did say that they do kind of act the same way, you know what I mean, in terms of trying to really make you believe a certain way. It's like abrasive. Yeah, it's religion. It's religion. It's religiousness. It's like, I see a lot of that similar culture. There's so many crossovers of like, okay, well, it's not God, but it's creator. Or it's not God, it's the universe. It's oh. like, well, if you don't know this, you don't know that. Or my, my friend who's like, I don't eat McDonald's, but he does ketamine. I'm like, okay, like, they're both like <laughs> not, you know, like, you're such yeah. a freaking... Our world is like filled with like, the rightness and all that is like, it's, it's just like, uh, yeah, it's, um, I don't know, it's, it's a difficult thing to, to like, put words to. Damn, this got well, deep, I re- this is a good conversation. I know, we went deep with it, I didn't know. we? I want to know the most sinful thing you've ever done in your entire life. And I, we can oh, send, you know, I'll, I'll edit it. it. Yeah, but like, what, think think a little bit about it. So what then That's my answer would be. That's a deep question. So my, my rebuttal would be, is it the most sinful thing that my own morality views as a sinful thing? Or is right. it the most sinful thing that the general Society. population would yeah. view? Yeah. Yours, <laughs> your, let's, we could do both. <laughs> Um, damn. We'll dude. talk too. We won't put. We won't make you. <laughs> we won't make you um, yeah, dude. I don't know. It's hard uh, to like, That's really a tough question. It is the answer. I don't know. It I really is. Like, I think it's the know? way it's worded because sinful sounds a lot more like weighted. If I was like, what's the craziest thing you've ever done? Sinful, I think, is like the way I perceive that question is like, what's the most shameful? Because I think sin in the that's religious a, context, like that, like you shame. feel most guilty. Were yeah. you? Were you? Did you yeah. religious? Yeah. What religion? Like, uh, Christianity. Okay, I'm Catholic. Yeah, Same. So you're not. not oh. So you definitely get it. Uh, yeah, I went to confession. Um, I was confirmed in the same. Whole, yeah, like nine yards. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I was. I was married in the into the in the, in the Christmas like yeah. mass for like the whole community. So I'm going to heaven. Actually, probably <laughs> not now. This probably got <laughs> that. Yeah, I. Uh, I, I'm sure there's a lot of things, but I had a partner at one point that I cheated on, and I felt really. I don't know if that's the one, but it's that's, one that is like yeah, that's that's sick. Because I have a lot, but there's uh when I'm working through all of it, but that's one that like in that moment I was like yeah yeah I'm just gonna do this and didn't think about the repercussions and it's a uh, thing that like I really fucked up that relationship that was really solid and I sh- I like did it out of selfishness and did yeah. it out of like lust and did it out of like um, lack of respect and all these things and. You know, I can forgive myself for that action, and that partner f- forgave me for that action, you know? And we stayed together for a little bit, but the thing about it is, it's like, that kind of thing is, uh, it's something that, like, sometimes I think a uh, sin, quote-unquote, feels really good in the moment. You know, yeah, it's oh, like, yeah, fun, it's right? It's yeah. yeah. actually sex, right? Yeah. Because the yep. hormones are going, and the, the moment is hot and heavy. Yep. Um, and then it's the thing of like, what? Chelsea's like, yep, okay, yep. been there, yep. love yep. sex. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> but then it's the dealing with ourselves after, you know? That's, I think, what makes us sin. Well, I always say, I don't know if it's like Catholicism, but I, I like love watching porn in the moment, and then right when I complete, I feel like so guilty. I think it's like the Catholic guilt. <laughs> I feel bad. I, I know it's silly and embarrassing. No, and well, well are you. Are you still religious at all? No, not at all, but it's just like, yeah, uh, neither am I. It's just like a, like, I think the way I was raised, I was Catholic up until, uh, like, I went to Jesus camp, my parents were pretty religious. Yeah. Um, like, like conditioning, dude. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I feel, I'm, admittedly, I feel that way sometimes. Catholic guilt is a, yeah. a real thing. And think about this, right? Think about this kind of concept. If you want to control people, which in my mind, that's what religion yeah, is. Yeah, I agree. If you want to control people, take their connection to themselves in an intimate space and make them feel bad about it so yeah. that they can't be in their body because that's this thing of like when we're in that space with ourselves and interacting with our body and we're getting deep into ourselves and then we get to that place where we should be in a release in a like free you know like a blissed out state the emotion or the thing to follow is shame or guilt or whatever then people are are easier to control because they're vulnerable. They, yeah. yeah, they feel like shit. So we um we I, that power away. I went to CCD like every Wednesday and we had confession. This was maybe like fifth grade. Oh my god. And goodness. we like our our, 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 our like, care do like because you had to like 
create the pre's of like oh, a whole definitely. thing. And, and so... You have to line up your list of sins. Yeah. And so, you know, I'm like talking to my friends after it. And so I told my priest that I'd watch porn. And he made me say like seven home movies. And I talked to my friends after and they're like, what? They're like, we didn't say we did anything. I'm like, what? I thought we were all like, we're going to be honest. Yeah. Like, and like, yeah. I, I did not need to tell her. I only admitted to the priest the light shit. Like, fought with my sister, yada, yada. I I really, the one good thing I'll say, but it's also kind of a bad thing about Catholicism, (laughs) it's really hard for me to lie. Like, Uh, and if I do lie, I feel really, I lie sometimes, like, if I'm if I need to like make a story slightly mm-hmm. better, I'll embellish it. But like, but I'll I just even admit it that I do. But I, if I lied, like if I I cheated on my partner too, and everybody knows about it because he posted about it on Facebook. So fuck you. Mm-hmm. Um, but I had to tell him right away because I, I I could not live with myself. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I think um, I was reading this book last week, and the author expressed guilt is us judging ourselves for our own morality, and shame is fear of how others will judge us yeah yeah it's an interesting thing so to switch the topic up there and talking about and it's correlates because confessions and the confession food um there's a burn happening in october yes yeah, called on. alchemy and uh oh, one of my homies the, the yeah elijah, elijah that, my boyfriend has been to that. uh so a friend of mine who's going there is working on this art installation and it's a confession booth but it's a kinky confession booth and I don't really know much more than that but what I think that entails is like uh probably like a glory hole situation oh my god <laughs> yeah, like that's that. like the one thing I'm scared about I know my songs are approved but like I know like I'm naughty I'm like naughty and um I like crazy stuff but I'm like nervous to go with like a partner like for some of the naughtier stuff you and I were talking about well that, like, and it's all, you know, consent-based, you know, it, you know if you, way. if you want to do it, you can, and if not, you can do whatever you want. If it's not a fuck yes, then it's a no. Yeah, yeah. then it's a no. Totally. I, it's, and it's, also, I go it's back a, and you forth. You don't have to participate in, in any of those things that exist there. I heard there's a squirting contest. So, I've been to that. It's not necessarily a contest, because they're not competing against one another, but it is, like, a, uh, uh, Performance? <laughs> is it like one person like making them squirt so like in a row? People squirting with either their partner or themselves. Do they do it on command? Have you ever squirted, Jen? Uh, I don't think so. Okay. Have you? Like I've had like plenty of orgasms, but like, like the actual it, like it has shooting been... out like because I know what it is. But, but like it hasn't. Um, it's I don't it, know the, it, like the direct way to do it. It just like ha- sometimes it happens and sometimes it doesn't. Yeah. What? It's pee. Is, is it's it not, pee? It's not pee. Oh, it's not? No, it's it's like, so... Because it, it looks like... From, I, it smells like, yeah. It's not. There's an there's like an enzyme and some fluid created in um, like a small... Sounds nice. Scientific time. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, yeah. I, am, oh. I am a scientist. <laughs> We're good. It's, um, I don't know where that fluid is stored, but there is some... Because it can't, comes out of that same pathway, there's some <laughs> yeah. like urine there. But it's a uh, sexual fluid yeah. that gets created in somewhere in the body. It's like a really gleek when you gleek. Kind of like a gleek. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I gleek. can't do that. Gleek. I, I, I can randomly do it. Do it. Yeah. Gleek so is imagine that. though, like, so imagine this, right? Imagine someone who can make themselves squirt. And then imagine that them surrounded by people that they don't know. Yeah. Imagine how, like, when I went to the, that event for the first time, like, how, like, I was vulnerable and exposed. Because, like, oh, this thing right here is like, this person can, you know, create this reaction, yeah. this experience within their body, but also surrounded by all these people and, like, so vulnerable, but also so What's your sign? empowering. And yeah, like they have a strong just, mind to be able to do that. Well, I'm so I'm a layer. I'm an exhibitionist. Like that's I don't mind, but also there's just so many things. It's like you said exhibitionist. What do you mean? Like you well, Leo Virgo. All eyes on me. A Leo Virgo Scorpio. Okay. Wait, Leo. What's your like? No, all right, everybody, you ready for some? What's your birthday? birthday? <laughs> you ready for some astrology? I know. I, I'm a Leo rising. A when's your Leo, birthday? Uh, July thirtieth. Okay, so I'm you're a, Leo. I'm a, that's like your first name, Leo. Yeah, we'll keep it. I'm a Leo too. So yeah, so I like I'm a I like to attention. Yeah. Um. So I guess not exhibitionist. Well, what like, do you mean by exhibitionist? Like, um. No, I guess not more in the sexual. But like, I'm not afraid of like, 
performance. Yeah, you know, yeah, like I wouldn't. Th- that would be fine with me. It's more so just you never know how your partner's yeah. gonna feel. I never, I, I would right. want my part. I, my partner would be able to do it. I could do it, but like I would want him to do it. And, and I know yeah. that doesn't make sense. At to the moon, the burn this year, they had like some shibari. What's that? Workshop. What's Isn't that, that what it's called? It's like rope play, so oh. it's like bonded. Cause... That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. I would rather do that like with him, like not and I don't so know. they were doing like with the crowd, you know. I, I go I'm a walking oxymoron. I'm I mean, trying to figure, figure myself out. Yeah. 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 No, there's no right way to do anything. But um yeah, There was a so ropes course there? <laughs> there? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Super I fun. Went to a Shibari workshop in Asheville that um someone taught who taught it like did you know, how did you find it i don't remember it wasn't so there's was no like um sexuality involved but there's sensuality there was no like nudity or penetration or anything like this they were it's like more emotional the functionality of look who's here we like, have a guest hey, hey, like come in come, come so cute what's up mister we got you like in the house Yo. right don't you I do. I have a business. My business is called Easy Wind Design. And our, uh, the premise of my business is uh, conversions. So we do everything from vans, school buses, shipping containers, trailers, um, what have you. Things that are already a Se- Do you do like sex dungeons in the <laughs> You know what? Check this out. So I'm going to give a tangent. I watched this fucking thing on Netflix. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, where it's like this lady, this, like, British woman, like, goes to people and, like, makes a sex dungeon in their house. Oh, so my, my whole God. business, essentially, like, in a synopsis, is I take something that's already a container, and I build out the interior. And I we do everything. Plumbing, electrical, whatever. I would love to do that fucking job. Because that's, like, what I do is I build out a space that's already there. So if I had the ability, anyone listening yeah, right now, it's... Keegan Spear, check us out. Easy Wind Design. If I, if you want a dungeon. He said the last name. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, so I heard it now. There, go ahead. Uh-huh. Me up. If you want a sex dungeon in your motherfucking house, get in touch. Or your van. Or you know where to look, people. Wanna, but the sex van is so pretty. But, I mean, it, I mean, I get it. <laughs> we can turn it around. Candy included. Yeah. yeah. Candy and puppies come with the thing. Yes. Um, Free but, orgasms. Yeah, I would love, I would love to do, I would, I would love to do a build out like that. I think that would be. That would be neat. That's niche. Sh- I don't hear many people. Yeah. I guess I don't really advertise publicly, but I don't hear people doing well, that. Well, yeah, Keenan is a jack of all trades. Just yeah, bought my all, yeah. brand new dining room table. Yeah, Keenan's gonna build a new set from him. Yeah. Oh yeah. Sure. Yeah, I like the <laughs> righteous and fix some shit, making crazy things. Yeah, and then when Blake and I buy a house, we'll hit you up. <laughs> okay. We'll make it fucking gnarly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah like making crazy for the basement and, and building crazy. <laughs> things. Yeah. yeah. One of those beds that like the beds lifted and you have a little cage under it and all Ooh, the all perfect. the yeah. yeah. Except if we get into an argument, Blake spent <laughs> lock me up in there. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah. Um, yeah, do you know out. Cody Klein? Oh. Yeah, Cody Klein. Were, were you working with him? I love yeah, him. Yeah, so we have, like, that's my brother forever. Right. And uh, we basically do the same thing, but just operate different LLCs. Oh, so it's different businesses? Different okay. LLCs, but under the same roof. And we do the exact same thing, and we share jobs and all this other shit. We're just in the process of figuring out how to merge our businesses so that's kind of the phase we're at now mm-hmm. yeah we do the same thing and that's, that's my homie i have a funny story about cody like i, I met him a long time ago with charlie and rachel oh, nice. we were like all hanging out and we're all at my house and we were making um like whipped cream pies um like you know for like whipped cream <laughs> stuff yeah. Yeah, yeah. and um <laughs> we uh like i like Char- rachel and charlie bought all like the whipped- window window Yes. Um, uh, so we we're making the whipped cream pies, and um, Rachel, Charlie, like they all bought it, and like they're at my house, and we've been drinking margaritas all day. And I was like, I just got broken up with my boyfriend. I was like in a weird mood, and I got so drunk, and I just grabbed it all, went down to my bedroom, like took all of the whipped cream supplies, and ate whipped cream pies by myself. I had three people at my house. Like, <laughs> oh, that was the God. first time I met them. Like, I was, and they let you do it? No, like I just. I don't know. Although they they probably had no idea. They were just like nice. I'm like, okay, yeah, exactly. she just went. Like, I went she just going to the bathroom. I wasn't being mean. I didn't like stomp off. I just yeah. like went down to my bedroom. <laughs> and, like, they let you do your thing. Yeah, so that's, that's good friends right there. But that's like that, that wasn't mine. I, I was trying to make a good impression on him, and uh, but he's he's a really nice guy. Us on Facebook, like he and I standing together on the fly up from, from Burning Man. Aww. And uh, someone commented, they were like, "Oh my god." <laughs> and he was like, uh, wait, this is partner? Yeah. yeah. Like, did, did y'all get into the partner discussion? I call Bl- I call Blake my partner. Okay, I'm going to rapid fire some questions, Asheville-based. 
Okay. Um. So the vault or Farm Burger. Neither. I go to Foothills, which is next to Highwire, across from um, Biltmore Iron Metal okay. Company. They're open four to like eight during the week, not on Mondays. If you want the best burgers, I'm gonna fucking tell you. Um, let's see. What, what, about, what about when you cook one at home? Uh, I mean, honestly, they lean get times. Yo, what's your favorite bar? Oh, that's a tough one. My favorite bar was the Slide Rod. Wow, wow, wow. Oh my god, see, yeah, now, bar. Now, my updates. favorite bar is um. I don't have one because I don't really drink like that. But you know what I've really gotten into recently is karaoke. And I fucking yes. love it. I love going to karaoke. That's, that's What's your favorite karaoke, karaoke My spot? favorite karaoke spot's Alley Cat. And what's your go-to song? Oh, uh, great question. My go-to song is two songs. If they haven't done it already, and it's later in the night, I do Bohemian Rhapsody. Because <laughs> everyone knows <laughs> okay. it. And it's okay. a hype song. If, mm-hmm. And then my other one is um, uh, almost any Elton John song that's like really popular. Yeah. I got the range for it, and also it's just like I fucking crush to those songs. I really, I really admire. I see that's the one thing I was just talking about how I, I had like an exhibitionist. The karaoke you scares like the it. crap out of me, but I did it the other night in Charles. We, we Charles <gasps> you did. I did Jenny from the Block. I'm so proud I didn't know of anyone. You. Yeah, I love karaoke. I really like was proud of myself. I'll tear up some, some Flavor Mac shit. on the mic. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah just oh, it's here. We need to let's all do karaoke I'll get yeah, up on totally stage. Trying to think. I hear Friday night is karaoke night. What do I hate most about uh, Asheville? Yeah, what do you hate? Yeah, come on, talk some uh, shit for a second. <laughs> I hate Airbnb in general. Uh, Why? God, I hate yeah. Airbnb because I was reading an article yesterday that 80% of the available housing is. Um, well, is, are, are rental houses. did they not have to put a restriction yeah. on that within it's, city it's limits? Hard. Yeah, maybe they have, maybe they haven't. I think that's. It's a little well, I don't think little you can have an Airbnb that, within city limits. That, Okay, so where can people follow you on Instagram? Where's your business page? Plug um, yourself. My business page what you got on coming up? Instagram is Easy Win Design, and then my personal page is I think it's Key Manor, K three E's Manor. Yeah, I'll put um, it up on the. And then what else? Yeah, well, hit us up. We're working on a bunch of projects. I have like the, the thing that I'm working on right now that we're really excited to release is uh, this thing called the Boogie Sprinter. It's a brand new Mercedes Sprinter that we built out to look like a 1970s like shagging wagon. Oh my god! The whole god. inside is done up to the fucking nines on like all quality leather mm-hmm. interior, glow in the dark, dark thread, um, LED lights, laser engraved wood things. Uh, the bedroom is floor to ceiling purple velvet with a starlight <gasps> headliner, which for those of you that don't know, is what they install in Bentleys. It's a sequence, so it makes it look like the ceiling okay. is sparkling or shooting a meteorite. We got that kind of vibe going on. Um, and then, yeah, that's pretty much the gist of that. Uh, if y'all are out there listening and you want to go to a burn for the first time, check out Coracle or check out Emergence. They're both going to be really good burns. Also, I'm not a part or involved with, but if you're looking for another great burn to get involved with that is a little, like, bigger, there are 8,000 people, I believe, is Love Burn in Miami. It happens in, I think, January or February. And, uh, it's a great entry-level thing to get into. I definitely so recommend that show one. Show up and don't be a fucking bitch. <laughs> yeah. well, this has been a wonderful episode Jesse. where can people find you what's your instagram online you want to yeah my first and last name jesse ie with an e or ie with a okay yeah. so i-e with an e okay i'm e-c-l-a-r-y baby that's right and i am at official nora fran um follow like and subscribe on youtube follow us on spotify that's full of sin with one s um Apple, Spot, Amazon podcast. Stay filthy, mind your business, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Love y'all. Hearts and farts. Hearts and farts, baby. Let's try to be like my sign off. Mind your business. Isn't that kind of fun? I love it. Mind your business. Mind your business. Come tell it all. Woo!